Ship 36 exploded and destroyed the entire Massey test site. But SpaceX just made a decision that changes everything. They're not rebuilding B-2. They're abandoning it completely and jumping straight to V-3 with the new Raptor 3 engines. While Twisted Metal sits in the ruins, B-18, the first V-3 booster, is already being stacked. Is this the smartest move in SpaceX history, or did they just throw away months of progress? The answer will shock you. Let's dive right in. The Destruction That Changed Everything The morning after Ship 36's explosion, Starbase looked like a war zone. Metal fragments scattered across hundreds of yards, the test stand completely obliterated. Workers couldn't even approach the site for hours because of the sheer devastation. But here's what nobody expected. While the world saw disaster, SpaceX saw opportunity. The fuel lines that took three weeks to install, gone. The support structures worth millions of dollars, twisted beyond recognition. Even the drainage systems caught fire, filling with debris that would normally take months to clear. Most aerospace companies would spend the next year rebuilding. Boeing would form committees. Blue Origin would delay everything. But SpaceX? They made a phone call that shocked their own engineers. Cancel all V2 rebuild orders. Wait, what? Decision that broke all the rules. Picture this scenario. You have five flight-ready vehicles sitting in your factory. Booster 15, 16, and 17. Ships 37 and 38. Each one worth hundreds of millions of dollars, each one ready to launch. The logical move? Rebuild the test infrastructure. Get these vehicles flying. Maintain your 2025 schedule. But Elon Musk doesn't think like everyone else. While cleanup crews worked around the clock, something extraordinary was happening in the background. Instead of ordering replacement parts for the destroyed V2 systems, SpaceX was quietly canceling contracts. They weren't rebuilding the past. They were betting everything on the future. Think about the mathematics here. Rebuilding Massey for V2 would cost tens of millions and take at least eight weeks. Then what? Four or five more test flights before transitioning to V3 anyway? Or they could take that same time and money, build V3 infrastructure from day one, and skip an entire generation of technology. The risk? Absolutely massive. If V3 fails, they've just wasted six months with no backup plan. But the potential reward? It could change everything. The secret that changes the game. Here's where this story gets fascinating. While everyone focused on the twisted metal and burning debris, B-18 was already being stacked in the mega bay. Ship 39, the first V-3 prototype, was nearly complete. This wasn't a panic decision made after the explosion. This was a carefully orchestrated plan that had been months in the making. The Raptor 3 engines aren't just improvements over Raptor 2, they're complete redesigns. Higher thrust, simpler manufacturing, significantly better reliability. But that's just the beginning. V3's fuel system uses entirely different metallurgy. The tank structures have been redesigned from scratch. Even the hot staging mechanism got a complete overhaul. These aren't incremental upgrades. These are fundamental changes that make V2 look like a prototype and V3 look like a production vehicle. But here's the part that will blow your mind. Remember those abandoned V2 vehicles? They're not being scrapped. The twist nobody saw coming. SpaceX is quietly salvaging critical components from the V2 prototypes, recycling test sections, even modifying segments for structural analysis. Why? Because V2 and V3 share the same basic diameter. Parts can be mixed and matched, Components can be repurposed. More importantly, that quick disconnect system everyone assumed was destroyed. SpaceX had a backup unit sitting in storage. They'd been planning this transition longer than anyone realized. The explosion didn't force their hand. It gave them the perfect excuse to accelerate a plan that was already in motion. But here's what makes this absolutely brilliant. While their competitors are still trying to reach orbit reliably, SpaceX is building the infrastructure for Mars missions, the gamble that could change space forever. The pressure on SpaceX right now is enormous. They promised 25 Starship flights in 2025. They're already behind schedule. 
Every week of delay makes that target harder to reach. And if V3 has major problems during testing, there's no V2 system to fall back on. Those hundreds of millions in V2 hardware become expensive museum pieces. But SpaceX has never been more confident. They're not just building a new test stand, they're constructing the foundation for the next decade of space exploration. The new Massey facility will handle pressures that would have destroyed the old system. Support vehicles twice the size of current starships. Enable tests that V2 never could have survived. We're talking about full-scale orbital refueling demonstrations. Extended engine burns lasting hours instead of minutes. Eventually, crew-rated flights to Mars. This isn't just about getting to orbit anymore. This is about permanent human presence beyond Earth. Why V2 had to die. The brutal truth? V2 was showing its age. Ship 36 wasn't SpaceX's first failure. It was the final warning that this generation had reached its limits. Look at the pattern. Early Starship tests were chaotic but showed promise. V2 flights became more reliable but hit a performance ceiling. The engines were complex. The fuel systems were inefficient. The structural margins were too tight. V3 solves all of these problems. Simpler engines mean fewer failure points. Improved fuel systems mean longer burns. Better structural design means higher payload capacity. But the real breakthrough? V3 is designed from the ground up for refueling operations. V2 could barely handle single-stage missions. V3 can support multi-stage deep space expeditions. The difference between V2 and V3 isn't just generational. It's the difference between a test program and an operational fleet. The race against time. Right now, SpaceX is in the most critical phase of their entire Starship program. They need to prove that abandoning V2 was the right call, and they need to do it fast. The new test infrastructure is being built at incredible speed. Components are arriving daily. The engineering teams are working triple shifts. But here's what should terrify every other space company. If SpaceX pulls this off, they don't just leapfrog the competition, they make everyone else irrelevant. While Boeing struggles with Starliner and Blue Origin delays New Glenn, SpaceX will be conducting orbital refueling missions and planning crewed Mars flights. The question isn't whether SpaceX can make V3 work. The question is whether anyone else can catch up once they do. The future that starts now. This decision reveals something profound about SpaceX's long-term strategy. They're not just trying to win the current space race, they're trying to end it. V3 isn't designed for test flights, it's designed for missions. Real missions to Luna Gateway, Mars surface operations, asteroid mining expeditions, the upgraded engines, massive fuel capacity, and improved reliability aren't just nice features. They're requirements for becoming a true spacefaring species. And if the rumors are true, if V3 can actually achieve the performance targets SpaceX is claiming, then we're about to witness the beginning of the greatest expansion in human history. The explosion that destroyed Ship 36 might not have been a setback at all. It might have been the catalyst that launched humanity toward the stars. The moment that defines everything. So here we are, SpaceX just made the boldest bet in aerospace history. They looked at a disaster and saw destiny. V2 is officially dead, V3 is the future, and in six months, we'll know if this gamble saved humanity's path to Mars or set it back by years. But here's what I keep thinking about. Every great leap forward looks insane until it works. The Wright brothers were crazy until they flew. Kennedy's moonshot was impossible until Armstrong stepped on lunar soil. Maybe this explosion wasn't SpaceX's worst day, Maybe it was the day they stopped playing it safe and started playing to win. The real question isn't whether V3 will work. It's whether we're witnessing the moment space exploration stopped being an experiment and became an industry. What do you think? Is SpaceX's all-in bet on V3 genius or reckless? Drop your thoughts below because this story is just getting started. And if you want to stay ahead of every twist in this incredible journey, you know what to do. The next chapter of Starship's story is coming faster than anyone expects.
The explosion destroyed everything. Ship 36 detonated during testing, obliterating SpaceX's Massey's infrastructure in seconds. But what Elon declared next? Nobody saw this coming. Instead of announcing delays or damage control, he made a statement that's completely changing Flight 10's timeline. The space industry is stunned. Why would he react this way to such massive destruction? What does this mean for SpaceX's future? Let's dive right in. The setup that nobody saw coming. Ship 36 wasn't supposed to explode that day. Everything was going perfectly. The massive rocket had already passed its cryogenic test back in April. The heat shield tiles, upgraded with new white blankets, filling every gap. The Raptor engines, ready for their first real test. But here's what makes this disaster even more shocking. SpaceX had actually scaled back the test. Instead of a full six-engine static fire, they decided to play it safe, just a single-engine burn, a conservative approach that should have been routine. So, what went wrong? And why did Elon's response completely blindside the entire industry? The domino effect nobody could stop. When that pressure vessel exploded, it created a chain reaction that moved faster than human reaction time. The rupture damaged the header tank lines, essentially unzipping the entire vehicle from top to bottom. Within seconds, the payload bay was ripped away from the methane tank. Opaque gases roared out with tremendous force. The payload bay door went flying, engine parts scattered like shrapnel. The quick disconnect gantry, a massive structure designed to withstand rocket launches, toppled over and crashed onto the testing platform. The methane tank farm, where millions of dollars of infrastructure supported future flights, completely obliterated. But here's the detail that changes everything. SpaceX engineers watching the telemetry saw something that defied all their models. The failure pattern wasn't random. It followed a specific sequence that revealed a fundamental flaw in their understanding. What does this mean? Why would Elon call this destruction the best thing that could have happened? What Elon knew that nobody else did. While the space community expected delays, investigations, months of rebuilding, Elon's internal message to his teams was completely different. Sources close to SpaceX reveal he called this explosion the best thing that could have happened. Why would the world's most successful rocket entrepreneur celebrate a $100 million disaster because buried in the telemetry data was proof of something SpaceX had suspected but never confirmed? The current Block 2 Starship design had reached its limits. Not just this ship, the entire generation. The COPV failure wasn't a manufacturing defect. It was a design limitation that would have eventually shown up during an actual flight. Better to discover it on the ground than 200 miles above Earth with crew aboard. This revelation changed everything, but what SpaceX did next shocked even their closest partners. The secret SpaceX doesn't want you to know. Remember Test Tank 17? That mysterious test article that's been quietly undergoing trials at Starbase? Most observers assumed it was just another routine test for the next booster design. They were wrong. Test Tank 17 is actually validating the internal header tank system for Block 3 Starships, the next generation that SpaceX has been developing in parallel, the same generation they plan to introduce for Starship Flights 12 and beyond. But Ship 36's explosion just accelerated everything. Instead of a gradual transition, SpaceX is now considering jumping directly to Block 3 for Flight 10, a move that would leapfrog months of incremental improvements and deliver capabilities that weren't supposed to exist until 2026. Think about what this means. They're abandoning proven technology for something that exists only in computer simulations and limited tests. The infrastructure gamble, the destruction at Massey's wasn't just collateral damage. It was almost Strategic. The methane tank farm that got obliterated? Already outdated for Block 3 requirements. The testing infrastructure that got destroyed? Designed for the old propellant flow rates. SpaceX was going to have to rebuild this infrastructure anyway for the next generation vehicles. The explosion just gave them a clean slate to start over with the right specifications from day one. But here's the risky part. Rebuilding for Block 3 means committing to the new design before it's fully proven. If Test Tank 17 reveals problems, there's no backup plan. 
No fallback to the proven Block II architecture. One test tank holds the future of human spaceflight in its hands. The timeline nobody expected. Industry experts predicted 6 to 12 months of delays after the explosion. They calculated rebuild times, investigation periods, regulatory reviews. Every analysis pointed to Flight 10 slipping well into 2026. But those experts didn't account for SpaceX's parallel development strategy. While everyone focused on Ship 36's destruction, Ship 37 was already undergoing engine installation in Megabay 2. Not with Block 2 engines, with modified Raptors designed for the Block 3 propellant system.